energy stored in capacitors. Consider an initially uncharged parallel plate capacitor charging by transferring a charge Q from one plate to the other, leaving the former plate with charge negative Q and the later with charge positive Q. Of course, once charge is transferred, an electric field is set up between the plates which opposes any further charge transfer. In order to fully charge the capacitor, work is to be done against this field and this work becomes energy stored in the capacitor. Suppose that the capacitor plates carry a charge Q and that the potential difference between the plates is the work done in transferring an infinitesimal amount of charge dq from the negative to the positive plate is simply dw equals to v dq in order to evaluate the total work done wq in transferring the total charge q from one plate to the other we can divide this charge into many small increments dq find the incremental work done in transferring charge using the above formula and then sum all of these works. The only complication is that the potential difference between the plates is a function of the total transfer charge. In fact, VQ equals to Q by C. So DW equals to Q DQ by C. Integration yields WQ equals to integration from 0 to off Q. Q DQ by C equals to Q square by 2C. Note again that what W done in charging the capacitor is the same as the energy stored in the capacitor since C equals to Q by V. Stored energy can be written in one of three equivalent forms. W equals to Q square by 2C equals to CV square by 2 equals to QV by 2. These formulae are valid for any type of capacitor since the arguments that are used to drive them do not depend on any special property of parallel plate capacitors. The energy in a parallel plate capacitor is actually stored in the electric field generated between the plates. Consider a vacuum for a parallel plate capacitor whose plates are of cross-sectional area A and are spaced a distance D apart. The electric field generated E between the plates is approximately uniform and of magnitude sigma by epsilon naught where sigma equals to Q by A and Q is the charge stored on the plates. The electric field is approximately zero. The potential difference between the plates is V equals to ED. Thus, the energy stored in the capacitor can be written W equals to CV square by 2 equals to epsilon naught AE square D square by 2D equals to epsilon naught AE square D by 2. Now, AD is the volume of the field minus filled region between the plates. So, if the energy is stored in the electric field, then the energy per unit volume or energy density of the field must be W equals to epsilon naught E square by 2. Thus we can calculate the energy content of any electric field by dividing space into little cubes, applying the above formula to find the energy content of each cube and then summing the energies thus obtained to obtain the total energy. The energy density in a dielectric medium is W equals to 
epsilon e square by 2, where epsilon equals to k epsilon naught is the primitivity of the medium. This energy density consists of two elements. The density epsilon naught e square by 2 held in the electric field and the energy density k minus 1 epsilon naught e square by 2 held in the dielectric medium. This represents the work done on the constituent molecules of the dielectric in order to polarize them.